Hello everyone, and welcome back to Adventures Through the Mind. I am your host, as always, James W. Gesso. This podcast explores topics relevant and related to psychedelic culture, medicine, and research. And this episode is about Iboga. Specifically, it's about the Bwiti. The Bwiti are a cultural tradition out of Gabon, Africa, and they are the original culture of Iboga. So our interview today is with a guy named Tateo. I'm going to introduce him in a second, but first I'd like to give you a little context. I was contacted by Jonathan Dickinson, who I've known for many years now. He was actually episode number three of the podcast was an interview with him. And he's a part of a team putting together an online webinar series called the Bwiti School of Life. And he wanted to see if I would be interested in the podcast here to be a promotional partner. Upon looking into the course, I thought it was a great idea. So I said, yes, who can I interview? And looking through the list of presenters that are going to be a part of this webinar series, we settled on Tateo because he's the only person that speaks English. Uh, And unlike the course here at the podcast, we won't have a translator on hand uh, during during the interview. So we went with Tateo. um, And as you'll see, he's a wealth of interesting uh, stories and knowledge on the Bwiti with a unique perspective because he came into the Bwiti culture um, from being originally not African. Um, And he'll talk about that story throughout the course of, of the interview. So that's the context. Um, I'll talk about the course in a moment, but first let me let me introduce Tateo. Tateo first came to Gabon in 1971 at the age of 21 and became a Gabonese citizen settling in Libreville. He was the first white person to be initiated into the Bwiti Fang tradition in Gabon in 1979 and was later initiated into the Masoko traditions in 1994. Some would say that Teo has since, quote, opened the door, end quote, to Westerners in Gabon, and he has served as a guide for numerous expeditions and missions, including National Geographic, the BBC, and many others. He co-founded his first Gabonese NGO in 1981, which has since led to the creation of Ibando, his present NGO. Having initiated more than 350 Banzis initiates, uh, he has directly supported hundreds and indirectly supported thousands of local people in Gabon, leaving a substantial positive footprint uh, along the way. So we talk about Ibando, we talk about what brought Tateo uh, to Gabon initially, what got him to stay, what got him involved with the Bwiti, and we just talk about Bwiti and Iboga quite a bit. And uh, this is an interesting interview because it's on location for Tateo. So you can hear birds in the background and he even ends up having conversations with different people, different, the the computer gets turned around at some points to have conversations with the other people who are hanging around. And it was, it was an interesting and, uh, and fun interview to have. So I'm, I'm anticipating that you'll, that you'll enjoy it, but there's two more things before that interview begins. Um, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon, and I'll do that in a second. But first, let me tell you about this course. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna read it here for you, which is that the Witty School of Life is a four-part interactive webinar series that serves as a platform and voice for traditional practitioners of Witty in Gabon to educate and inspire anyone with an interest in the use of iboga. Rather than a materialistic view of the historical development of iboga and ibogaine in other contexts, we will explore the emerging and evolving cultural context of its use and the way that these practices and ideals have influenced global culture and approaches to healing and spirituality. And a four-part webinar series, so over four Sundays starting November 8th, which is pretty soon from when this comes out, about two weeks. And it's going to include pre-recorded videos from around the uh, villages of the uh, Bwiti cultures and a number of speakers from traditional Bwiti practitioners, Q&As and webinars and all the rest. So Seems like it's going to be pretty interesting. I've set up a link through my website, jameswgesso.com forward slash witty, if you'd like to go check out the course. And if you do want to participate, then you can use A-T-T-M-I-N-D at mind 220 to get 20% off your order. So jameswgesso.com forward slash witty at mind 20 to check out the course and get a discount if you'd like to sign up. I feel like this course is likely going to be very interesting for anyone who has a connection with Iboga from a personal end or a cultural end, or what do I mean, like an academic end, like anyone interested in entheogenic anthropology presently or in the past, uh, I think it's going to be something that you'll you'll find really enjoyable. So again, jameswgesso.com forward slash Bwiti to check out the details of the Bwiti School of Life course. Okay, last point uh, before we get into the interview, which is a 
deeply heartfelt thank you to my patrons on Patreon who make this podcast possible. None of us would be able to enjoy this if it was not for your ongoing financial contribution. Uh, so thank you very much. The people whose names are listed on the screen here on YouTube, they have given significantly, some of which for quite some time. So an extra thank you to them. Their names are also listed in the description uh, for this episode with whatever podcatcher you're, you, you've got it going on with. Um, if you aren't yet a patron and you'd like to become one, I would be very grateful for that. You can head to patreon.com forward slash James W. Gesso, and you'll see the options there about uh, tier levels and um, what types of perks come with what types of tier. I, I mean, you're all familiar with Patreon by this point, so I don't have to explain that to you, but it'd be great if you did that, patreon.com forward slash James W. Gesso. Other support options include PayPal or cryptocurrency if you just want to do a one-time donation. Thank you in advance for doing that. And thank you in advance for sharing this podcast out and about because that's how it gets around. Um, so thanks. And now, <laughs> and now here is my interview with Tateo on Adventures Through the Mine, episode 130. Enjoy. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, trying again for round two, Tateo, welcome to Adventures Through the Mine. Does it still feel good to be welcomed or is it getting a bit tired at this point? No, uh, that will prepare me a cup of tea so it will be okay. I see. Great, great. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so you run, uh, or you are a part of, or perhaps the director of Ubandu, which is a an NGO out in Gabon. Um, and uh, previously, we were trying to do this, but we were having some issues. So, I'm going to ask you again if you can maybe explain to us uh, what Ubandu does. Uh, I would like to. Yeah, I th I thank you for your uh, uh, welcoming. Uh, yes, you, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that uh, people like you uh, are interested in our, our job because uh, we, we, are, we are lucky people having done always what we like here. It's very beautiful to have a life like that. And this is because uh, when I came in Gabon 49 years ago, I fell in love of the country and then instead of staying two weeks, I'm still here, you know, 49 years later, which means three years after being in Gabon as a, as a French young man, I met, uh, I had a breakdown in the forest in a very dark place because it was at night. I was working for a truck company and I had to, to bring a spare part somewhere in, in the forest, the other side of a forest, of a river. And then I had a breakdown, and I uh, I I saw a light in this darkness, and it was like uh, in the fairy tale, you know. I saw a light very far, and I went there. It was 200 meters, 300 meters. Oh, it was 300 meters, and so I walked, and I met a wonderful man who became uh, my friend up, up to his death, which was uh, two years ago. Papa Andre. In fact, this guy uh, it was so nice, so wonderful man, simple, uh, generous, good artist, great musician, slowly became friend. And he, he, he introduced me to his brother, to his family, to his kids, to his village, to everybody. And slow going, I met those people and after three years of meeting, I decided to do initiation because people were talking very bad of that in, in, in Gabon, in town, especially the French people. They were saying, oh, this is witchcraft. They're, they're going to eat you, those bloody black people. They are bad, you know, you, they are wild. And they were much more civilized than the guys saying they were wild, you know, mm. whatever. This. This is how I met Witty after a breakdown in the forest. But as I tell you, as I was the first one from Western country to to get initiation in, in this type of thing, I've been, people try to discourage me a lot. But finally, after three years, I said, if these people has to eat me, let them eat me because they are very nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. That's how I decided to do the initiations, which was really incredibly strong and which made me uh, uh, 
which helped me to become who I am, I think. Yeah, yeah, because I was a young man. I was a young man, not that young. I was 29 already, which mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. not that young, but it's, it's not that old like now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but this gave me the opportunity of meeting a lot of people along my long life in Gabon and lo lo lots of people in all type of tribes, all type of people. And, uh, and it's very, it's very, uh, it's very uh, grateful. Yes, uh, I'm very grateful for that because it it gave me a very a very happy, a very true, a very in dense uh, and not crazy dense and uh, I wouldn't say uh, wisdom, but uh, you know after time you begin to feel that what what's wisdom, you know, at least a little. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So it was very nice. Yes. So, so I don't know. If, yeah. If I answer to the question, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't. I don't think you did, but I, I liked what you offered. Uh, and and it's funny because <laughs> I feel like I, I I already I already know the answer to the question because you had just answered it when we were having some other audio issues, um, which is you know what does a bon bondu do? And it's a yes. it's an organization that helps bring uh, foreigners to Gabon to experience Gabonese and, and Bwiti culture in a way that's safe for them and also safe. Uh, for the local people there in a way that bridges culture, shares cultural wisdom, um, initiates people in, in, to the to the Bwiti culture, and then also helps yes. to bring uh, resources to the local people yes. while yes. also helping to uh, encourage and support the young who have been urbanized in previous generations to come back to their traditional cultures and back to their exactly. traditional lands. Exactly. Exactly. So you resume it perfectly, better than I. <laughs> <laughs> so then, this was getting into the question that I, I had for you just just before we had yes. to pause and, and 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 switch over, which is, you know, what are the witty, essentially? Uh, in fact, the, the, some people think witty is a tribe. No, witty witty is a, is more. Uh, it's a ritual. It's a ritual. Uh, some people say it's a religion, but religion. It's a, it became a dirty word, you know, after a lot of different religion who imposed their dogmas. Mm -hmm. The word religion, which is originally be linked to the invisible, uh, well, I would say it's a spiritual way of living. Uh, and But first, to be introduced into witty, you have to eat a psychotrop, which is called Iboga, which is called Maboa, which is called Diboga, which is called Eboka, which means whatever it uh, in in any tribe you find uh, this this name, which means the one which heals mm. or the one who heals. So Iboga is supposed to heal. Whatever you have, Iboga is healing you. In another sense, maybe Iboga does not heal everything, but Iboga makes you see where you are wrong. Uh, and w where you are wrong is very often where the disease is getting in, you know. So Iboga is very clear. And Bwiti is a technique to develop your, uh, your, your, uh, what you understand or what you understand with Iboga. And it's a technique to, to ritualize uh, the, 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 the Iboga conception when it's ritualized. It's uh, together, you sing together, you dance together, and you are happy together. It's like this uh, Amerindian proverb, you know, we are happy at the village when we dance. There's nothing to add, you know, what, what else, you know. So it's, Bwiti normally is about happiness, it's about man and happiness. But ha man is difficultly happy if he's sick. So man liberated or uh, emancipated of disease you know i don't know if it's very correct english but i mean man without disease can find his way to happiness hmm. that's would uh, could be a resume of bwiti but bwiti is very different different ethnies practice different bwiti 
And uh, but the aim is always to be uh, happy and wisdom man. But some are not, even if they think they are. And you know, me, it's like uh, there's many proverbs about that. That uh, that uh, if uh, yeah, if you have no doubt of uh, what you do, it means you're not very clever. <laughs> 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 so. Maybe the doubt helps you to to be humble, mm. but witty is very good. Iboga is very good, but I don't know. But I see in this uh, world some we call it in French derive. I think in English it's drift from the original witty. You know, some people drift. They do their own way. Which can be good, but sometimes there's crazy people, you know, they become crazy because uh, Iboga breaks your ego, make, make your ego burst out, but then uh, it, it, you reconstruct something which can be a kind of a fucking guru, you know, mm. uh, not very wise. And this happens. I, uh, I could tell you a few names of crazy people in the West doing witty, mm. but it's not to me to judge them, but I know that something will happen wrong because the way they do it, well, I don't know, if everyone is, has his own light, his own way, but uh, if you think you are God and you are the only one to be God, you're wrong. Mm. That's a problem. We all are God, you know, we, every leaf of the garden, every, you know, it's very Buddhist. Witty is some, uh, somehow, there's a link between witty and uh, Buddhism, but uh, the problem in all religion, what is it? Dogma is no good, you know, so when it's dogmatic, and it, it happens in Gabon that you have very rigid uh, witty, because... Uh, it's difficult to say uh, why. It's I know why. It's because in Africa, to show to your kids that something is important, you make them, uh, you you do it um, not violence, but you 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 make it with pressure. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure. You have to know. You have to do that because this is important. So that's how some people they run away to town because it's too complicated to follow the rules. You know and. and and they think that in town, life is easy, you just pick up money on the ground, which is not true. Mm. And uh, instead of following the grandparents, they prefer to see, to try to see what they do, what they see on TV. And this is much away from Britney in the sense that Britney is solidarity, Britney is living together, uh, but he is being good to you, to you, of course, because if you can't be happy yourself, you cannot make your, your, your friend happy. So you have to be happy, you have to be in good shape, in good condition, to make your, your parents, your, your kids, your neighbors good, good too. So it's all about love and solidarity. Buiti, Buiti, Iboga is love. Some people say Iboga is God, but... Uh, I don't like this world of God, so I prefer the world of love. Iboga is love. Buiti is supposed to be love, depending who does it. Yeah, so, because I can be good today and I can be bad tomorrow. You know. mm -hmm. but, uh, bon. I this talk is, too much. I think. No, you're yeah. good. You're good. This is this is something that you had pointing out, pointed out uh, previously around that uh, you know but, uh, Iboga is a is a plant, you know, and it and it yeah. is what it is, and and it offers what it yeah. offers. And the yes. and, and carrying on to what you just said that the, the witty is like a is almost like a it's like a culture a cultural technology for inviting the the full intelligence of that plant uh, to yes. land yes. to land inside of you, but that afterwards people are still people and people can have been with the plant and had communion with that intelligence and still act like self serving or uh, manipulative like crooks and yeah, yes yes. So, uh, yes, um, that's a problem. Iboga is always straight, is always true, is always strong and beautiful. 
but man is man, dep depending on what he had as traumas, as experience, as intent, make it different, as you know. Mm -hmm. But beauty is a way of life, of, yes, sure. And, uh, but, bon. what I would like to say that, uh, what I, I really, you know, you know, bon. You see what happened to wine. Uh, wine is uh, came from Creta or uh, Greece and expand in 2000 or 3000 years, expand to the whole world. And symbolically, Greece is in bankrupt today. And I, I would say the same thing for Iboga, that you see Iboga is very Gabonese plant or basin of Congo plant. And now it's spreading all over the world. And the more it's spreading all over the world, the less it exists in Gabon. And uh, if all the world takes Iboga, the plant in Gabon will, will not be found again. So there's projects like uh, Blessing of the Forest, making sure to plant Iboga mm. in the villages. So it could be a, a very good incomes for villagers and it could be a very good uh, uh, exchange, meaning that the villager plant Iboga in his endemic uh, place and can uh, sell it or deal it to the people who need it in clinics, in uh, centers, in... But you... So this is a very good income for the villagers because the villagers in Gabon they are very poor because uh, the, the agricultural is survival agriculture. And if they had this Iboga as a resource, like some have cacao or some have coffee, it would make a real good, good, good income for them because instead of being poor, they could at least uh, do what they wish to have a nice place to rest to have a nice place to live, to have uh, to send their kids to school and to or to 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 teach them their their own skills because that's a drama of Gabon at my point of view. The skills of of the Gabonese people are getting very loose because the young people are not massively interested by it because they don't see any incomes in it. Mm -hmm. So when the Western people come. Uh, if it's uh, as if it, it was a term before sustainable, it can make everybody happy. And well, for the moment, it's still a dream. But I think this time is coming because before before this COVID, we had 35 person a year coming to us, and uh, even I can say 50 person because 30 35 were, was staying around a bundle. And the other were, were uh, directed to other places. And those 50 a year uh, bring money to, uh, to Ebando, to the village, to the Gabon. And, uh, and then the contact is made. And then uh, uh, it's, uh, the love story is on. I mean, because Iboga is, is more than a simple plant. Iboga is more than a simple plant. Iboga is... Uh, well, like uh, the old man like to say, Iboga is God. But I would say Iboga is love because I'm fed up with God, the, the word God. So Iboga being love, I'm not disturbed at all because Iboga is really love. But as you know, everybody see love at different level. Eh? So, but hmm. what to say is that Iboga is kind of uh, a treasure and some people don't understand that they are sitting in the middle of a treasure. Some people are really understanding that it is a treasure. And some people shit on the treasure. It's, there's all quality, three quality of people about Iboga, I think. Hmm. So, I, so, I, so what is, what is a, what is a Bwiti initiation? Um, what, what is what does that look like? Uh, is it is it a specific type of ceremony? Is is any yes. ceremony including iboga with Bwiti and an initiation? What yes. maybe maybe give us a sense of what is an initiation and what does that ceremony look like? Uh, initiation is a well, it's normally a long process. 
because since the day you are called to do it, to the day you do it, it's a big delay. For some people, it's uh, one week. For some people, it's uh, one month. For some people, it's uh, one year, five years. It depends. Because before, in Gabon, when you wanted to eat Iboga and to become a booty member, uh, you had to have uh, a call. And this call was even given by your, your soul, go and eat Iboga, or caused by a problem. You had a, a health problem, a curse problem, a, a family problem, something you don't understand, or a real will of doing it. That was the only reason to do it. Up to now, it's the same, the same. Eh? Is even for a Western guy or for an African man, uh, you know, it's like uh, you have an approach, you decide to do it, then you have to find out the time to do it. If it's urgent, you find the time now. If it's not urgent, you think about it and the process is on. So initiation begins the day you, you know you will do it, something like that. So this can last. But uh, the, the process itself, the, the ritual process in Gabon last, I would say, well, officially or, or re really, or what you can see is about five to seven days. But uh, according to what you live in, in this process, it can last uh, a lifelong, <laughs> it can last maybe for eternity, or it can be just a spark in your life, depending of, of you and your relation to the plant and to the Buiti culture. But I would say that the initiation itself begins by the river. You go to the river, you, you do offerings, you do prayers, you sing in the forest, you talk to the spirits of the forest, you sing to the spirits of the forest, uh, very, not always, but very often uh, through a tree uh, or a river or uh, you're in the forest. That's where you have your first uh, spoon or root of, of Iboga. After, it's like a, a baptism, you know, you are, you are, you are uh, not drowned. You are uh, in the river. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are washed with plants. It's a ritual, you know, it's a, it's a ritual. And uh, so after that ritual, you go back to the village. And that's where after two, three, four days of preparation, we, you have bath, you have a uh, smoking ceremony, uh, fumigation, you know, like a, a kind of sauna, Gabonese sauna. Uh, you have a vomiting ceremony. It's all a process which lasts between three and seven days according to where you do that. And, uh, and then comes the night or the afternoon. Some people begin initiation in the afternoon. Some people be begin the initiation at night. And that's, that's the night of initiation. That's where you eat uh, 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 according to ritual. Some ritual you eat a lot of iboga some ritual you eat just the quantity to see what's your problem. Mm -hmm. Because there's two types of initiation, uh, a, a spiritual one and a therapeutic one. Some people do the therapeutic and they find a spiritual one. Some people do a, a spiritual one and find a therapy. So it depends on you mm -hmm. and the relation to the plant. But it's all ritualized. So it's much more easy to be accompanied, you know. You are not alone. You are with people you trust because you know them already, because you trust them. It's all a question of trust. So Iboga, Iboga, um, I don't know, how do you say, Iboga eating? No, Iboga, when you eat Iboga, no. Uh, Iboga... Consumption? Consumption, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, has to be in an in a environment of trust. Hmm. If you don't trust, you're going to have a bad trip. So that's why... Uh, that's why we have to protect the shock between cultures, because, because Africa is very good intended. 
most people are very well intended. When they see you coming to their culture, they really appreciate it. But there's, uh, there are things which are not, uh, uh, you know, fitting because, well, I don't know. You know, uh, the Westerners, they, they really know that plastic is rubbish. Africa is still, well, most of Africa does not already know that plastic is, is a rubbish. Mm-hmm. I mean, when, when you have plastic in, in, your, in your yard, uh, an African man will take the leaf to clean, but he, see, it, it doesn't see that the rubbish is not a leaf. He see that the plastic is a rubbish. Mm. Because they've been so, uh, so uh, how, do, how do you say, hypnotized or uh, totally, you know, the problem of Africa, they think that everything what white people did is good. So they don't see that the rubbish is made by the white people, but it's rubbish, you know. It's something very strange. You know what I mean? I don't know if you see what I mean. I have seen, I've seen you, similar things in places like um, places like Southeast Asia and uh, in 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 South uh, South America, where there's where there's there's no uh, seemingly no understanding of how extremely destructive plastic products are for the natural environment. And th- that that's terrible because it's like uh, the, the the Western world is just beginning to understand that, but here it's it's a big problem because when you ask to to one of your young guys to please clean the yard, uh, if you don't explain the things, it will leave the plastic and take the leaves off. You know, yeah. I say I don't care. The leaves are not rubbish for me, but the plastic is. You know, it's all this. <laughs> Well, this is a detail somehow in, in the, but if you go to a village without being accompanied, without being uh, helped to, to, to meet people, you can be, you know, like it happened. I know that it happened. You're in the middle of initiation. You took a huge quantity of Iboga and now somebody is coming to tell you, oh, please, uh, we, we're missing candles or we're missing uh, sodas or we are missing uh, something. So you begin to think, oh, but uh, oh, uh, where is my money? Uh, then where is my passport? And you, be, it, you, you understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. In the sense that this cannot be done because when the person is, is uh, deep in Iboga, if you make his, him, him or her think about where is my money, the the, the world trip is, is fucked up because uh, she will think, oh, my, uh, she wants to please the guy who say that because he is he's, uh, he's a, a, her or his brother of initiation. And that's where uh, the cultural shock is, is, is bad because if you go without... Uh, I don't. I don't want to you to misunderstand what I say. I, it's just that in the middle of initiation, I saw that in the past, people coming to ask for candles to a guy lying down there, doing his experience. It's not the time to ask him for candles, or because he will say, "Oh, I already put my passport, and this is over. The trip is somewhere else." You know. And I've, I've so heard that, you. I've heard you explain this elsewhere, which is it, it's not a it's not a malign or uh, it's not a malicious or ma- kind of thing. It, it's that, and as I've heard you explain, is that when um, when a, when an amount of money is offered, the yes. the Gabonese people will they'll just say yes, even if it's not enough. Um, and but then afterwards they they still want to get the amount of money that they need and it just comes out in this weird way and then and then it's not it's not necessarily malicious it's just a misunderstanding of culture yes, uh, culture yeah. culture misunderstanding that's you you know pinchbeck daniel pinchbeck no yes i do yeah yeah he had this problem he had he had this problem with my witty father and uh, that's one of them because uh boom you know, you don't know Lieberman, Dan Lieberman, you know Dan Lieberman? No, he, he, he's dead already. He was an ethnobotanist from, uh, from uh, uh, South Africa. Very nice, beautiful man, young man. He came to initiation. Uh, to, uh, he came to me after having done an initiation among the Fang in the north of Gabon, which was nice. It happened, it was okay, good. So then he, he, 
he came with two people from South Africa, white people from South Africa, and then wanted to be initiated in the South tradition, which is more um, roots than the North one. I mean, you know, uh, well, it's. I will explain that uh, maybe later in the webinar. You know, the, the, they are different. Well, whatever. Both are very interesting and rich and and true and and nice and uh, efficient. But uh, I, I led I led those people uh, to to my witty father of the south, my second initiation, and uh, after two hours of. Of, after the river, after coming back to the village, the guy was afraid. He wanted to go home. So the British father said, okay, if he wants to go home, he goes home. So I had to leave to bring that man back to the hotel. That was 20 years ago. The guy was not ready to, to be initiated, you know, and I was too young to see all that, you know, because I had many experience after that, before that. And so... That was sad. And Dan Lieberman, two years after, he brought another man, Daniel Pinchbeck, to my booty father without telling me. I didn't charge any money because by that time I had a, 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 a small truck company. I was, I was autonomous. I didn't need money to make people visit booty. So I, uh, the first time I led him, the second time he went straight to him. He didn't speak French. The British father didn't speak French, English, so they had an argument with Daniel Pinchbeck, and Daniel Pinchbeck left. He wrote that in his book, mm -hmm. because they had an argument about the money. And my British father said, said to them, go away, you'll see what happened, something like that. And, and Lieberman had a, had, a, had a car crash. So mm. if you have, if you, well, he didn't have a, uh, he didn't have a car crash uh, two weeks after. He had a car crash six months later or later. But Pinchbeck didn't get a good initiation, and Lieberman died. Uh, bon, I, I don't say it's my witty father we cursed him. No, not at all. That's not true. But it's never, it's never good to to make people angry, you know, and. Uh, and it's very sad because uh, because uh, Dan Lieberman was a cute man. He lost his life, and I don't know why he passed me behind. But I don't know. I don't know. Pinchbeck would explain me that. I don't. Know. I never met Pinchbeck. Uh, I don't care. I, I'm I'm sure he's a good man, but I don't know him. So whatever. It's just to tell you that many wrong happened already. Okay. The, the microphone okay? Yeah, you're okay. So you understand what I mean? It's there's a culture intercultural mediation to be done because Gabonese people, as it's exactly as you said, uh, they accept any money, and then it's missing, and uh, and they want to do good, but they have the pressure of the whole family, of the uh, the taxi, the, the food, uh, everything. It, it costs money. It costs money. And Gabon is a very expensive country. So to make it easy and uh, affordable, it's difficult. Hmm. Uh, and uh, to make it true and as it is, it's possible. But uh, you have to be sure of the people where to send people because there's a lot of uh, business like everywhere, you know. It, Gabonese people is not is not a crook, but misery makes because <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Gabon has never been as poor as today. I'm here; it's a fiftieth year. I'm beginning to spend here. I never saw Gabon so poor, and it's very sad because the Gabonese people is not crooky, is not uh, you know trying to get you money on the back or to make you a bad thing but it's becoming it becomes to exist it never happened before it's on it only becomes to happen for four five six years you know it's new i mean crookery it's very new in gabon but it exists now like in every town in the world you know. 
So I would like, bon, I, I don't think we are the only one to be in between Westerners and Gabonese people, but I wouldn't like a story like the one of Pinch, Pinchbeck happening because instead of Pinchbeck, instead of saying Iboga is what Albert Hoffman said, something who is far away to to have given all its secrets, all its good and benefits. You you know Albert Hoffman, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. And then Daniel Pinchbeck doesn't talk about, well, maybe it's good that Daniel Pinchbeck doesn't talk so good of Iboga, because if not, it will be a rush, like the gold rush, or mm. I don't know. Mm. So I don't know. Yeah, you I can know, see. I can see then. You know the the utility of, of being a mediating force um, to both yeah. pr protect each side, but also to share yeah, this 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 yeah. medicine, both the iboga, but also the cultural medicine of the Bwiti yeah. with uh, with the world, and to n nourish everybody in the process. I want to maybe ask you a little bit more about the the ceremony. Um, and in particular, what what do you see as, or what is the role of music um, uh, during during the Bwiti ceremony, the initiation ceremony? In, in fact, you have two roles uh, in the ceremony. The two important things are the the light and the sound. So uh, you don't do iboga in the dark. Uh, it's uh, some people do it in the world, eh? in the dark. They saw that in ayahuasca, so they do it in the dark. I think this, well, iboga is light. So you need to have light for iboga. So it goes with fire, it goes with candles, it goes with torches, it goes with fire. In fact, Bwiti is all about keeping the fire, the sacred fire, you know, I could say that. And then the sound. The sound is a vehicle. The vehicle with no sound, you go anywhere. You go there in your mind. I mean, in your in your spiritual traveling, without sound. I don't. Uh, I think it's the same. Bon, you know, I don't. I don't know if I should say that. You know, you know Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. uh, of course. You know what he said. He said, if I did three good things in my life, one of them is, is LSD. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would say uh, the same, but the second one is Iboga, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and uh, Iboga without music, uh, you, you, you don't go somewhere. Bon. I, in fact, I don't know. I never did Iboga without music. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, so I don't know. But I know that with music, this mungongo, which is one one string bow, uh, or the harp, which is an eight string bow. So the mungongo is a male instrument. The the harp is a, the female instrument. So depending of the ritual, one of the, one of them is leading, or the other one is leading. But they both are in the thing, uh, like if like you do both to make a spiritual child, you know. You, you need the male energy and the female energy. Mm. And that's very interesting because the music carries you to to uh, to the, the bottom of your soul or to the bottom, if there is a bottom to universe, you know. So the music carries you to where you have to go or to where you are called to go, or where you go. So the music is very important. Mm -hmm. And so I, normally... Mm, no, please sorry. continue. Normally, in the initiation process, you don't have drums. The drums come on the rebirth ceremony. After your initiation, just the, 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 the dancing night, which is at the end of the initiation, at the end of, the, of this process of initiation, which is your the beginning of your new life somehow uh, that's where the drums come but in the initiation just the shakers and the main bows 
Hmm. Yes. So the, the yeah, question. Oh, or, or, or half, yes. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. Thank you. Um, the the question I have here is is about these two instruments, and um, yes. I I have not I have not uh, I've not consumed iboga uh, except once at a, at a music festival many years ago. Somebody offered me some small pieces of iboga root to chew on, which I mean. Yes. For sustainability reasons, I don't think I would be wanting to access the boga root anymore. But many years ago, I didn't understand those issues, so I had a yeah, little yeah. bit, and it was a strange night. But nothing really to write home about. So I don't, I don't know about this iboga initiation except from a from a, scho a scholarly perspective, but only a little bit, right? And yeah. one yeah. of the things that I I have heard is a uh, a connection between the iboga plant and the iboga ceremony and moving into what I understand as being like the realm of the dead or something like this. And I'm curious if you can comment about, about that. Um, and, and I'm thinking about it in, in regards to these instruments. Cause I've also heard that one carries you out and the other brings you back in. And that when you hear the other, you need to come back in uh from wherever you are maybe you can clarify that for me that's a that's a yes that's a scholar uh scholar uh yeah you read that somewhere you heard that somewhere yes uh, at, at one of these one lecture i've i attended yeah. um about but, Ipoca, yeah. uh, but, you know uh when people say that wiziboga you can meet the dead. I think that can be true, but it depends on some people, uh, and that's why it's said like that. Some people, they want to understand why they they have a loss of their wives, of their kids, of their parents, and that's the reason why they eat Iboga. And very often, they find the reason why this person is dead, or who killed that person, mystically or physically. So I think that's why people say Iboga brings you to the kingdom of death or somewhere like that. Uh, I wouldn't say it's not true, but it's not really my point of view. And uh, about the instruments, uh, the one is carrying you away and the other bring you back. It's very poetic uh, vision of the thing, but I think personally that uh, both of them, they carry you where you have to go, or where you want to go, or where it has to go. And uh, it's more like uh, the, the, the team which is around you for the, 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 the spiritual travel is like uh, rowing. A boat, you know, it's like singing, it's like rowing, it's giving energy to make you reach the place you wish to to rise or to uh, to uprise or to uh, to be. So, so I, I wouldn't be so, you know, I would say, Iboga. Uh, when people say it's an access to the kingdom of death, it means, to my opinion, that Iboga is a, a great way to find out synchronicity or to meet or to really be in synchronicity. And that's phenomenal or noumenal, I don't know. It is a way to reach synchronicity. But I think this happens with other psychotropes too. To it, don't you think so, what I say? Uh, I think so, yeah, on some level. But I don't know. I've never been with Iboga, so I'm I'm going based on... No, but Iboga is Iboga, but Iboga is Iboga. I don't think Iboga uh, looks like or do like something else, but a psychotrop is a psychotrop. So, I mean, uh, I don't know much about mushrooms. I don't know much about other plants than Iboga. But Iboga makes you synchrone. So you can be wrong in your synchronicity, but it's because uh, you are wrong. It's not because Iboga has been bad. So the the one the the magic effect of Iboga is to make you synchron in your life. That's something. And, uh, 
I think that uh, African men uh, or you, I would say, I wouldn't say African men, I would say men, it's very difficult for, for a man to explain what a, a, a magic plant does to you because it's over the, it's, the words are small, you know, uh, to, to explain the feeling you have, the, the realization you get, the understanding you have, which makes you know uh, what uh, the energy, the div divine energy is, which makes you uh, understand or accept the concept of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I've always been atheist, but uh, the concept of Jesus Christ is very, very nice. What else to do than to help uh, that, you know, you know what means, uh, here we say, uh, we don't say shaman, we say Ganga. Ganga is some, somebody who is, who, who is practicing Iboga. Ganga means the one who has been saved, saved, can save. That's a total Christic uh, concept. I trust the concept of Jesus Christ. I don't believe in Jesus Christ as a character. I guess there was a, a nice rabbi somewhere uh, that they made, uh, after his death, they made him uh, what he is. Poor Jesus Christ. If you see what people do in his name, it would be very sad. He is very sad. I mean, so this concept of savior and saving because you've been saved is very nice but you have to mind because there's a lot of drift as you know you know you're a young man uh, i know a young man who has a shape like you is uh, is practicing in france is totally he becomes crazy it's not iboga who makes him crazy it's himself because he he is preaching, you know, he takes Iboga in a group of 12 or 15 person and he spends the night preaching. But it's like he's sick and person has to listen to his, uh, so this is dangerous, you know, because uh, it's not like that. You sing, you can drum, you can play music, but talk like I do now, I'm preaching, <laughs> it's bad, you know. It's not what Iboga wants, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I would like, uh, I, I can talk, 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 that won't, be, that won't be the value of one spoon of Iboga. But if you take this spoon of Iboga in the lift in New York, you won't feel Iboga like it is, you know. If you take Iboga maybe in, in the forest, uh, with a very good intent of being nice to you and to your to everybody, even the little birds, you know. So, what I could say that Iboga is great, Iboga is true, then man is man, you know. So that's all I can say, in fact. But Iboga is, is certainly the, the wonderful, the most wonderful adventure I had in my life. You know. mm -hmm. That's so, what I can say. So, so something else I, I have a question about, and I, I don't know, um, and I'm wondering if there is a if there is some understanding or engagement with spirits, spirit entities, um, it, it, with the uh, with the Bwiti tradition. Does it? I I, I understand that there is uh, there is a um, an interaction with the aboga as its own sort of intelligent thing. Uh, as an entity, yeah. I guess, of its own. But is there a sense yes. of or a working with spirits or spirit energies um, in, in, with Iboga? Yeah. Yeah, in fact, and in fact, you are, that's, uh, that's uh, evident. You are, you are, you are, um, I wouldn't say you are guided because it's very unconscious, you know, but you know that, you know, uh, I come back to my personal story. Uh, 
when, when I never go to the sea, I'm not a, I'm not a man of water. I live near the sea all my life, but you never see me there. It's, I like to hear it. But the fleas of the dog led me to the sea, and in the middle, you know, the sea is 800 kilometers of coast, and where I went was just in front of my house. Luckily, I had a witness that day, and I found a mask between my legs and the legs of the dog. It's like it was guided, you know. It, I talk to you about that because it's certainly one of the most powerful experience I had, uh, physical, physical experience. Uh, I had others too, but this one is uh, the most easy to explain. What are the chance to meet a mask uh, it's it's not it's not a, a mask you found in a shop. It's a mask that an old man so, uh, gave to the spirit of water because he didn't know what to do with it. That's a drama of Africa. You know, uh, they don't know to whom give the the skills because the kids are not that interested to to be in the misery of their grandparents, so they get rid of especially when the, the, the preachers of uh, evangelists or Catholics or Muslims say, this is witchcraft, this is bad, they leave their skills and they are not interested in the grandparents' skills. And so the grandfather gives this piece of wood to the sea, to the river, which give it to the sea, which go into in between the legs of a man and a dog. This is incredible. This is, this is, uh, oh, you can say it's a coincidence. No, it's, it's not a coincidence. It's a synchronicity. A synchronicity means a, a, a power that you don't see uh, give you a mission. Well, you, you can become crazy. Oh, I, I have the mission. I'm the new Adolf Hitler or the new Napoleon. I will do the, the revolution, the evolution, the revolution. No, it makes you really know that you have something to do with that because it's incredible. And uh, what you do during your, what you realize during your initiation makes you uh, do it too. You, because it's all, it's all a, a it's, it's, a, it's a path, you know, it's, Day after day, uh, it's a song of the Beatles, right? day after day, day after day, uh, you you getting better in your uh, opportunity to be the one you are, you know. And it's like the spirits uh, inform you to or guide you, but you don't have the, the physical feeling that they do. You're not a robot. You're not uh, on a battery, you're not teleguided, you are yourself, but it's like you are helped in the way, uh, you know, I have two, I have this uh, Debbie coming to help us. She's incredibly perfect in what she does. We have a, a, a Swiss Thailand uh, benevol who, who come and help. Luckily she was here, if not the computer, we, we wouldn't talk. <laughs> My generation is not so good. <laughs> or me. So, the presence of the spirits, spirits or spirit, I, I don't care about the plural or the single, you know, some people say, God is one, God is not many. No, no, please. The multiple is part of the unique and the unique is part of the multiple. So, so leave that, please. But it exists and it guides you. And I'm not a, a man saying, you know, I, I, I thank you, the nature, I thank you, the spirit. I, I don't really know who I'm thanking. I'm thanking the goodwill or the good intent or, or, or the good. What's, you know, because what's good to me, that's a concept of the pygmies too, uh, which is Mamisoba. It's my uh, Skype name. Mamisoba, it's means the truth, but the truth is completely, uh, it's a concept, which doesn't mean too much. Uh, Mami Soba means what's beautiful and good is beautiful and good. So, and that's close to the truth, because it's true. Uh, yeah, but it's true that the snake 
can be beautiful and dangerous, but it's beautiful and can be good too. If you don't walk on his tail, the, the snake is not bad, you know. So all that is uh, to rethink about. And I really do think that the spirit, plural, single, is accompanying you, us in our life when we give interest to this synchronicity. Bon. Mm. So just words too. And mm -hmm. I hope I don't make you lose your control. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm having I'm 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 having a, a manic episode as as we speak. Um, so <laughs> I, you mentioned so 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 in listening, you mentioned some people come to initiation for spirituality and others come for therapy, and that. Yeah. In, in hearing in hearing what you're talking about here, I'm getting the sense that maybe not in totality, but part of what comes of the spiritual um, is this sort of connection with synchronicity, connection with what is beautiful and good in a way that yeah. we can maybe align yeah. ourselves more deeply with it, That's it. Um, and, and move in the synchronicity of being rooted in what's beautiful and good as being what's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, so then I'm wondering, what is it? What is it for uh, for arriving in Arrête, having a thing? Oui. Good. Somebody's calling, so I make it stop. Yes. Oh, cool. Thanks. Um, so, what, what is it then to have a therapeutic experience with iboga? So, so how does iboga heal? Ah. Heal trauma, heal sickness. I, I, from what I understand, iboga is generally used for spiritual sickness, not physical sickness. Yeah. But what does it mean to? And how does Iboga heal a person? In, in fact, uh, what I saw as, with my experience, I, I have some people, they want a spiritual experience, but they forget that they have a big trauma in their childhood, especially a girl or a boy with sexual abuse or whatever. So they, they hide that, like we say in French, under the carpet. They hide it. And then they come to the experience, and in the in the middle of the important of the importance, the trauma comes up, and so it is what you hide comes up again, and then the, the 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 therapy of the thing is to is to accept it, which is not easy, but iboga helps, and then. To forgive would be a kind of too much because if you've been sexually abused, like it happens very much in Gabon or in the world, more than we think, uh, to forgive the person who did that to you, which allows you to carry on your life, you know. So this this acceptance of the trauma uh, and the forgiveness by the the boga makes makes you. Make, make possible to you to, to, to be healed with some time after. I saw that many times. Eh? So that's, I think, uh, the best, bon, for, for, uh, for sexual abuse, uh, it works a lot. Uh, it works a lot. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain that, but it's like that, you know. The, it makes you accept what you... Or it makes you recognize something you you didn't want to admit, that it happened. Because if, if you were a kid, you don't know if it happened. You're not sure that it happened. Did you dream? Was it a nightmare? But then you see the reality of the thing. It makes you live the reality of the thing, which is maybe horrible, but to which make accept this. Uh, because as I guess, I'm not psychoanalyst, but uh, I saw that many times, the acceptance of the trauma liberates you of the thing, you know, finally. So that's how the sexual trauma is healed. For other type of trauma, you better ask people uh, having had big traumas, you know. I think they are ready to testimony, you know. No? Mm. Huh? Well, maybe, mm. maybe I would, I would assume, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, what? Go ahead, go, go ahead. No, no, I, I wonder. What, uh, uh, bon, my English is not as good to understand the the 
the the high quality of your uh, spiritual approach. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because Debbie tried to ma- explain me something. So I I think that uh, you uh, you um, what you do is 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 uh, transmitting what uh, what people tells you over a radio or over a program or over some something. What I say will go where? Oh, uh, what you say will go to onto the internet through my podcast network on the iTunes okay. and whatever else, exactly as it is. So uh, our whole conversation as it is, no edits, no no cutting, just you and me chatting. Uh, maybe, uh, bon, maybe it's a little too much and blah, blah, blah. I mean, because <laughs> I, I, I was not very prepared to that. But I don't care. It's like that. It's like that. Well, I, ju- I just have to say that Iboga is important. Human is important, but human is a virus somehow. But uh, some virus are unnecessary. Some virus are, are, are very bad. So we're in the middle. <laughs> so. Great. Do, do you do you have time for a couple yes. more questions, or are we are are you are you up for today? Uh, I, I would like a cup of tea, but uh, I could ask. Tu peux pas me faire chauffer un peu d'eau, maman? Hein? Voilà. <laughs> non, tu me fais une tasse d'eau, une tasse d'eau chaude, une grosse tasse d'eau chaude, la plus grosse tasse, la, 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 la grise ou la rouge, tu vois. Et après, tu mets du thé dedans, un morceau de sucre et une ta- un nuage de lait. D'accord? Yes, let's go for one question at least or two. Okay, well, let's. Uh, I, I've got. I mean, I, I really, I really did want to hear. Jonathan was telling me that you had a you had a pretty interesting story about how you came to be initiated, and, and another one even to how you came to get the the blessings of uh, of uh, your Iboga father to provide provide medicine for yeah. people. Um, yeah. But with with limited time, I think uh, I think I want to ask you two questions. That <laughs> one of them will be, what is this upcoming course that you're participating in? But the first one is, I know that you have been the person uh, that ends up getting called when a foreigner sort of gets themselves in trouble somewhere, language barriers, culture barrier, cultural barriers. You end up getting called being, and you end up having to go on rescue missions for people in some way or another. Um, what is the craziest rescue mission that you've done over the years? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, the craziest one. I have to see that. Uh, you know, uh, oh, there's many. Eh? Bon. Uh, the problem is, uh, yeah, the pr- problem is when people. Uh, goes far in the boga uh, bon. the problem is when people is not well prepared they go to iboga but they make made a pact with uh, another entity uh, in their life uh, and they come to iboga and then they become themselves what uh, i've seen that uh, two three maybe four times in girls men Becoming, you know, you've seen this film uh, that everybody saw, which is not that good, but uh, The Exorcist, you know. Yeah, yeah. When you see the person becoming exactly like this exorcist, with one difference, you never see the head turn round. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the end of the, end of the, the journey rest, then. <laughs> all the rest is very present, <laughs> and that's, uh, that's difficult. I saw a ball. I saw a guy playing harp for six nights, six days, day, three nights, three days, playing harp uh, in his room, and we had to rescue him. But he was not uh, lost; he was just uh, in his in his trip. So you have to be very careful in in, ca- in keeping him because uh, he's in danger in the sense that. He can, you know, he, he, when he came out, he said, I'm going to a festival. He was half naked. 
he was going to a festival in Japan or something, so you, you have to, to tell him, oh man, the festival in Japan is not now, it's next week. Ah, okay. And he's going back, both. But rescuing outside of, we, we did a lot of rescue in a bando, and we did a few rescue outside of a bando, because people is calling us uh, at, uh, oh, merci maman, très gentil. Sorry. Wait, well, miss Allah. No. Merci. Oui, non, oui. Eh? Excuse me, once again. Mm -hmm. Dis bonjour, monsieur. Hello. Well, look, uh, yes, I, I'm very embarrassed by your question because uh, uh, we did a lot of rescue, but it's puncture rescue. So uh, I have to remember something special, uh, which is, which is, which is, which is, uh, I don't. I don't remember. Many, many. Well, how about I? I I'll ask you. An, I'll ask you the an, another question here about uh, about the course that you're helping to offer, and then if and if a story comes to mind, you can share it. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yes, okay, great. So, uh, Ibando is is putting together a course on uh, the witty way of life. I'm wondering if you can comment about. What this uh, what this course is going to offer and why people might want to participate. In fact, uh, it's an idea of Debbie, which is very nice, because she said there's a uh, for um, the world has a good a lot of interest in Iboga, but there's no real books or things about it. You just can pick up information on internet, but it's time now. To make an in, in, interview, to make present uh, people who give Ziboga, which is their, which is their work, uh, a kind of daily or yearly work to give Ziboga to people. So in different rituals. So we decided to join uh, different people from different rituals, from the two sects, to. To answer to the question of the Western world, and uh, to explain, uh, to uh, to answer to the type of question you can answer, mm -hmm. uh, you 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 asking me, and this uh, this is interesting because it's the first time that it happens that people, Gabonese people, can talk about what they know, what they do, what they feel, because they are not asked mainly, generally, uh, unless if you go to them. And uh, this will, will make a bridge between people and, uh, and, and possibility for, for them to have help in any situation. Some, some, because once the link is done, it's good to make people in between, you know. And especially for the Gabonese people, because it's free for the Gabonese people. So a lot of Gabonese people will be very curious about that, I think. The fact that it will be in English, but it will be French, because all the, all the, the Gabonese uh, which give, who give Ziboga, they don't speak English. Mm. Uh, my, luck, my luck was to like the Beatles when I was young. If not, I wouldn't speak English at all. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it. So, so then so, this, so this course is, is, is a way for, um, for people to participate in, in having sort of a Q&A session with uh, Gabonese people who have been uh, practitioners and participants in, in Bwiti yeah. um, and yeah. sort of helping to share the, the Bwiti sort of philosophy of life and way of life um, and perspective yes. um, to the people yeah outside who are interested or inspired by Iboga but don't have any connection with um, its, yes, Gab yes. its Gabonese cultural cultural roots. Yes. And, and what's interesting that it's different rituals. Uh, all, all led with Iboga, but with different uh, with different approach, uh, being male or female, uh, old, young, and uh, therapist or just spiritualist uh, both. Uh, 
it's all mixed, eh? Mm-hmm. But it's, it's nice people. I, I'm, I'm a little, uh, you know, this guy is very nice. Yes, good. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. <laughs> yes, yes. Hello, Hi. Yes. But I think, I think I'm, you know, it's like always. Somebody is asking me a question and I'm going in all sense yeah. and I don't answer to the question. So. <laughs> I, I think you did. Uh, if you, people will uh, will parse will parse parse their way through because I, I think I I've, I've lost the way many times but he's asking me what that we did many rescues what what is the one you want to say uh, as an example that I, 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 I don't know which one I, yes but in in fact uh, it's like when we we are more uh, What's terrible, uh, we had somebody, uh, one day, the French embassy, you know, they don't like me very much because I'm not typical French, but they called me because somebody died, not mm. in Iboga, in the Muiri ceremony, ceremony, because some people mix uh, two rituals, the rituals of uh, boys and the, and the Buiti, which is the Buiti spiritual, and the ritual of boys is a rite de passage, uh, to make boys uh, more boyish and uh, so this poor guy was a French man and uh, by telling him he has to do the ritual of the boys to be a strong uh, boy, he was already 50 eh? and he was not a boy anymore, he was already a, a realized man and uh, he, he he had this ritual in, in a very stupid place that I know with a very stupid man that I don't name here because it would be shameful for him. Uh, but they beat him, he died. 50 years old, the guy died because he has beaten beat with, a, with not a stick. I don't know. Huh? Yeah, the part of the ritual. The booty doesn't beat you. But uh, the ritual of boys when you are 13, 15, 12, uh, you have to pass between uh, two rows of people beating you. That's one of the épreuves, one of the... Hmm? One of the tests, yeah. So, they, this has nothing to do, to my opinion, with a booty. The guy didn't come to be beaten as a kid because he did the wrong thing in the morning, you know? So, that's... Uh, after what? This guy came with his wife. His wife, uh, the, as her husband died in Gabon. What do, what do you want? She, has, she brings back to, uh, to Europe as a feeling that they killed her, her husband. So that's the only time the French embassy called me to help. They called me another time, but for a very not so bad story. But that was bad. I, that's, that, I say that because don't uh, don't be stupidly uh, uh, blinded by the beautiful uh, Ganga, which will make you believe that you have to do something that you didn't come to do, because he is a Ganga and he knows you have money and he makes some money on your back and you die, and so you don't uh, need to come for that. Especially, this has nothing to do with the witty, and that's uh, something I would like to say. That most of the Gabonese are very nice people, but among them there are a few crooks, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't like people to fall in the hand of crooks. Well, this that's is all. this is true. This is true everywhere. I mean, the um, yeah, I guess g- so. Ganga, I guess. the guru, the shaman. You know, like it doesn't matter the culture, the color, the you know. It, Assholes exist everywhere. Um, manipulative crooks, you know, they exist everywhere. I think actually there's... Go ahead. No, no, that, that's all. Oh, okay. I, I just want... I, you can have a wonderful experience if you follow your heart, but always have a thinking. You know, don't be totally, uh, you know, uh, blinded, no? Naive, naive, yes, I know you're not naive, but some are. Some are, and, and Iboga helps to be innocent and pure and beautiful. Eh? And so what you see, you know, that, that's one of my main defects, uh, mainly not the main one, but it, it's uh, one of my defects. 
it's very difficult for me to see somebody lying because me, I usually not lie. So, and when, when you know, it's my, my condition is like that. I don't see somebody lying because I'm not used to lie, but people lie. And so I'm like a kid sometimes thinking that, oh, this guy lied. I'm very astonished he lied, but he lied. And then I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I am naive myself. That's why I say, uh, don't be naive. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I say that to myself, in fact, in fact you know. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. Before before we before we go, uh, Tateo, I'd like to ask you about um, one thing. One thing that came up for me when when I was contacted by Jonathan um, that about about this course um, was was rec recognizing the 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 current problem of representation around psychedelic culture which is an extension of uh, issues of racism where generally most of the people interviewed most of the people having established established a lot of success in the field are white men and then was was recognizing the sort of um the 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 the, the pinch points of having uh, a, a a white male to come on to talk about um Bwiti culture and Gabonese culture and I'm wondering and I mean given where you're coming from and the whole context uh of what you do with the Bwiti and the fact that you speak English I mean it's it's obvious why I you are on the show to talk about this um yes. but I'm, I'm wondering as as a as somebody who is a is often the person being asked the questions about the Gabonese culture because of your ability to speak the English and your under, the understanding of the, the cultural world differences, worldview differences. How, how do you feel about A, the role that you're playing in, and B, locally, how do, the, how do the Gabonese people feel about you being a voice for them? Hey, that's interesting. But uh, as you know, uh, I think it's like everything. Half of the people love me, half of the people hate me. That's all I have to say. Uh, what I know is I, I'm, you know, I try to help around. I'm sure I, I today I had some, somebody come in, she, she had kids, she wants me to pay the rent. I cannot pay the rent, but I can help. So I helped. Uh, but uh, this is witty. To help somebody is witty. Then uh, to refuse to help somebody, it's not witty, but uh, sometimes uh, you need to do it because if not, uh, <laughs> if not, you starve yourself. So it's very difficult to be in the balance, to be good without being stupid, and to be uh, stupid without being good. <laughs> Something like that. So, so. Uh, Wait, wait. Yes, yes, it's, yeah. She says it's about communicating. Uh, communicating. Uh, but I, I, I don't. Bon. Up to now, up, up to now, I've been really, really, really uh, not attacked at all. Uh, maybe once on Facebook by a crazy woman who, who didn't know, even know me, but she was not Gabonese, so I don't care. Uh, no, no. Up to now, incredibly, I never had been attacked for what I do. Uh, I mean, uh, frontly, maybe, uh, um, maybe uh, some gossip behind me, uh, maybe. Mais c'est vrai, tu as déjà entendu des mauvaises choses sur moi en ville, toi? Oui, beaucoup, hein? Ah, yes. She says she hears a lot, she heard a lot of bad stories about me. That what? Quoi, par exemple? Yes, I make girls crazy. Uh, I sell girls to Westerners. Wow. <laughs> Is that true? Uh, it's true that uh, I married uh, about uh, four girls and three boys to Westerners. I mean, boys to girls and girls to boys, but it's it, it be, it's because they met here. But in 25 years, eight marriage, 
it's not too much. No, it's not true then. It's just gossip. And, and uh, you have to know that uh, the Gabon of before and the Gabon of now has uh, had, had to stand 40 years of stupid television. <coughs> this does not arrange anything. It gives an, a, a window on the world, but uh, it kills uh, the local spontaneity. Mm. That's a problem. No, but uh, your question is good because uh, it's a fear of one of uh, my spiritual son, uh, Jan. He thinks that uh, what we will do will make us uh, being attacked because uh, we talk of the beauty. We, we don't talk of, of the secret. I, I, for me, uh, for me, the only secrets of the beauty are the plants. The songs, the history, the philosophy, it has to be known. If not, it will just vanish. Uh, the only secret to, to keep jealously, I mean, not to give it uh, to give it to or sell it to big pharma, is the plants. Mm. Because uh, all Gabon is, is like a, a big pharmacy, you know. And uh, even uh, even even Gabonese don't know the whole thing of it. Uh, and Big Pharma is, uh, is turning around and uh, they want to know. But uh, I tell my, my elders, or my, now my youngsters, don't tell, this, the, don't tell the only secrets, they are the plants. I don't see another secret. Do you see another secret in the beauty and the plants and the power of plants? The power of prayer is everywhere. But the power of plants is is endemic always. So, so if they attack me, I will tell them. I I don't want to betray the secret because the only secret is the secret of plants. I just want to share the philosophy and attract people interested, and uh, and uh, or make run away people not interested. That's all. That's my aim. I mean, it also, it seems to me that, that what you're doing is you're, is you're playing a role to bridge interested parties from outside Gabon to the traditions of, of Gabonese people directly with those people. And then sometimes, because you speak English, you're the person talking, right? Yeah. Um, but that, that your goal isn't to give people with the culture that you have the culture to give them, but that, you know, you work as a bridge to connect them with yeah, with the traditional yeah. people of that culture. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't consider my myself as a master at all. Uh, I think I prefer to to link people that are, that might fit together. You know, because you know, you, I know when I see you that I'm sure you will feel happy or uh, close to somebody, somebody more than to somebody, somebody. I might be wrong, but I might be true. So, uh, if you came. I would, I would like to present you a few people, and, and then you would choose a, a, according to your feelings, who, in who, in who you trust, you know. Because my only, my only quality is to speak English, even if it's not too good English. It's enough to speak some. Uh, so, but because the lack, the the problem, if there is a problem, the problem is like French. Speaking people are very few compared to English speaking people in this world. And French people are looking at their, uh, how do you call that? Most of the French people are looking too much to their, their own belly button to be interested in, in foreign cultures. And uh, so it means that English speaking people are so many that there are many interested in, in foreign cultures. That's where uh, my role is a little important in the sense that I can I can try to 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 make you meet the people that I know that are, are available uh, to available I don't know if it's the right word but are able able to to show you what you search somehow but I may be wrong too because it happened that uh, I I made. Uh, meetings uh, and after time you know because you know as I told you at the beginning of the interview I can be good today and bad tomorrow and that can happen with anybody so uh, I I would never say to somebody I have 100% uh, 
confidence in that person, mm -hmm. but I have trust in that person because up to now, I never had been disappointed. But this can change, you know. I, you know, human is human, but Ebola is always true. But human is human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's 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 leave it there, Tateo. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for navigating the tech difficulties with me. Um, and uh, I will I'll, I'll, I'll after this I'll, I'll share all the details for how people can get involved with uh, the course that you're you're a part of. You're not you're not the only person uh, speaking, but you're uh, a part of, and it's through your uh, NGO that um, that this yeah. that this event is happening and and uh, helping to fund having to bring funds to the to the local communities and the participants as a part of the course so uh, i'll get all those details and yeah. um, thank you again for uh, taking the time to to be on the show really appreciate it thank you to you because you have a big quality you you ask good questions and you listen <laughs> that's very uh, not evident <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry if I've been too long and too uh, sneaky Meandering. or what. I don't know. I, I, this Meandering. guy is... Huh? Meandering. Meandering, yes. Meandering, Meandering she says. She's here. Huh? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is no way. Yes, this guy is no way. He's the future of the pointy in the mind. Yes, Actually. one of them. Yeah. He's the son of one of the Ganga Hello. 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 You know, you, you'll be welcome anytime, please, you know. Thank you very much. And if I can be shorter, I'll be, yes. Thank you very much. I see, I see uh, cleverness in your, in your appearance. Okay, thank you. Which thank is, you. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Keep on, man, keep on. You too. Goodbye, Tateo. Take care. Bye, bye. Pleasure. Very nice, man. Huh? Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh somewhat wild conversation with Tateo uh, and um, that you are going to follow up with and check out um, the course that uh, he is participating as one of the uh, presenters in. Um, the course, I'm going to read you the course description in a second, but it includes a number of different presenters, all of which uh, local Bwiti people. So uh, here's the details of the course. The Bwiti School of Life is a four-part interactive webinar series that serves as a platform and voice for traditional practitioners of Bwiti in Gabon to educate and inspire anyone with an interest in the use of Iboga, referred to in Gabon mostly as Les Bois Sacra, the sacred wood. The series will provide a window into the beautiful and profound traditional uses and how the sacred word wood serves as not only a medicine, but a way of life in Gabon. The content aims to educate and connect people to the depth, artistry, and wisdom of the traditions, as well as touch on themes of integral plant medicine practice and sustainability. This is a unique educational opportunity. Rather than a materialistic view of the historical development of Iboga and Ibogaine in other contexts, this course will explore the emerging and evolving cultural context of its use and the way that these practices and ideals have influenced global culture and approaches to healing and spirituality. Each 1.5 hour webinar will include short video clips of material collected in villages that practice various branches of traditional Bwiti, live presentations from guests, and Q&A periods for the online participants who will be joining from around the world. So, if you want to check out that course, if you're interested in Iboga, in the Bwiti, um, in entheogenic anthropology in any way, uh, or I'd say like, I don't know, and they had mentioned maybe not going too much into the past, but sort of like the living, breathing culture of the thing, uh, then go to jamswgesso.com forward slash Bwiti. You'll link over to the website that has all the information about the course. And if you use the promo code A T T M I N D. Two zero at mine twenty, you will be able to get twenty dollars off uh, off your entry price. Thanks for checking that out, and thanks for checking out this podcast. If you enjoyed it, share it about, and if you would like to contribute financially, Patreon, amazing option. Uh, if you want to give 
over time and uh, PayPal or cryptocurrencies if you'd like to give just once. Um, details are in the description to this episode or at jameswjessel.com forward slash support. Yeah. So again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much for participating in the podcast, for participating in the discussions that follow the content that you get to enjoy here on uh, or through, through the podcast and uh, for helping make the world a better place simply by being a good person within it, which may or may not have anything to do with this podcast, but I trust that on some level that's who you are and that's what you're doing. So thanks. And uh, until the next episode, take care. <laughs>